Harper Collins presents Low Chicago, a Wild Cards novel by the Wild Cards Trust, edited by George R. R. Martin and Melinda M. Snodgrass, read by William Hope. A Long Night at the Palmer House by John Joss Miller Part 1 it had been 142 years since John Nighthawk had been inside the Palmer House, and then it had been the earlier incarnation of the luxurious Chicago hotel, known simply as the Palmer. Nighthawk's age was not apparent in his appearance. He was a smallish black man in a dark pinstripe suit with a discreet kidskin glove on his left hand. He looked to be in his thirties. He sighed as he gazed at the entrance to the hotel. Perhaps, he thought, it's finally time to lay old ghosts. He hurried across the street, dodging early morning traffic with the ease of the long-time urbanite, and entered the hotel's lobby. Inside, he paused momentarily, suddenly almost overwhelmed as one of his visions washed over him. They were part of the powers he'd gained on that first wild card day in 1946, and usually came as warnings of great danger lurking in the near future. This one was more incoherent than usual, chaotic scenes of fire and ice, of great beasts and shifting landscapes, of quick flashes of the past he'd once seen and an even vaster past he'd never imagined. He stood for a moment catching his breath, then went on to the elevator bank and up to the seventh floor, wondering what was in store for him this time around. The door to room 777 opened at Nighthawk's light knock, and he found himself looking down into the large, expressive eyes of a man even shorter and slighter than himself, no more than 5'4 and maybe 110 pounds. The crown of his head was totally bald, and there were baggy wrinkles under his soulful eyes. He looked as if he were in his fifties. It took Nighthawk a moment to place his face. He was the spitting image of the actor Donald Meek. Nighthawk had loved him in Stagecoach, the original version with John Wayne. He'd seen it at the theater back in 1939, when it had first come out. You must be John Nighthawk. The man's voice was high and flighty, fussy-sounding. I am. Come in, come in, and meet the client. Nighthawk entered the sweet sitting room. It was luxuriously appointed, as one would expect in the Palmer House, with period furniture that was a little too heavy and ornate for Nighthawk's taste. Death himself stood in the doorway between the sitting room and one of the two bedrooms. Death was tall, well over six feet, and cadaverously lean. He wore a black suit of old-fashioned cut and fabric. Rubies the size of walnuts gleamed in his silver cufflinks. His face and head were skeletal, fleshless, mere yellowish skin stretched tightly over bone. His teeth, white and perfect, were exposed by a lipless grin. Perhaps you know Mr. Charles Dutton, the man who looked like Donald Meek said, the client. We've never met, Nighthawk said, but of course I've heard much about you, sir. Dutton inclined his head. And I of you, sir. I would like to engage you to help Mr. Meek take care of me for the next few days. Dutton's voice was as cadaverous as Nighthawk expected it would be. You're here for the game. Nighthawk was so sure that he made it a statement rather than a question. Dutton's rictus of a smile may have widened a millimeter. Quite so. You know of the game, Mr. Nighthawk? He did. Poker, dealer's choice, seven players, hosted by Giovanni Galante, a high-ranking member of Chicago's most prominent crime family. A million-dollar cash buy-in. Each player is allowed two attendants. Some bring whores, Dutton said dismissively. Some bring bodyguards, Meek added. Dutton's eyes were dark and unreadable in the skin and bone of his face. It begins. 
Sample complete. Ready to continue?